It has been a fantastic year in 2021 for discoveries in Australian paleontology. So I thought we'd do a little bit of a review of all the discoveries made this year and some of the major events in Australian paleontology. So let's do it. The first big Australian discovery was about Palakestes. Palakestes azale was one of the strangest megafauna to live in Australia during the Pleistocene. It was a one-ton marsupial that probably used its prehensile lips to selectively feed on its favourite leaves. But here's the big mystery. How did Palakestes move? It may seem relatively straightforward, but the thing is its humeral trochlea in its elbow was really weird because it was just so flat. In fact, paleontologist Hazel Richards had this to say. This animal had arms fixed at a 100 degree angle like a Barbie doll. So how could Palakestes walk around with locked elbows? Well, on February the 2nd, Hazel Richards and her team of researchers aimed to answer this question. She created elbow models on the computer, then tested and compared the range of motion in Palakestes' elbow to that of half a dozen modern mammals and two of its extinct relatives. What she found was that Palakestes didn't have Barbie doll arms, but the range of motion in its elbow was still very limited compared to all the other mammals tested. She suggested that Palakestes' movement was likely very slow, laborious, its shoulders semi-sprawled, and its arms rotated slightly as it walked. This is a highly unusual gait amongst mammals, but it probably evolved to accommodate a specialised feeding lifestyle, such as bipedal browsing or scratch digging. This new discovery about Palakestes, that it may have walked semi-sprawled, is a fascinating advancement in our understanding of this enigmatic megafauna. Moving forward to March of 2021, let's talk about kangaroos that behave like monkeys. A new paper published on March 24th by Natalie Warburton and Gavin Prideaux have revealed new fossil specimens of kangaroos belonging to the Pleistocene species Congruus kitchenary. These fossils are from the Thylacoleo caves of South Australia. They include several skulls and two near-complete skeletons of a larger male and a slightly smaller female. Where this species gets interesting is its unique anatomy amongst kangaroos. It possesses the grasping hands and strongly curved claws of a tree climber and the long and mobile neck of a browser. This combination of features led the authors to suggest that Congruous was a semi-arboreal selective browser. Basically, it spent half its time climbing slowly through the trees and half its time on the forest floor and was quite picky about what leaves and fruits that it ate. However, its large size meant it could not hop from branch to branch or climb quickly like modern tree kangaroos do. This semi-arboreal lifestyle is unique amongst both extinct and living kangaroos. In fact, as the authors point out, it is the kangaroo equivalent of an old world monkey living in Australia. Without a doubt, the biggest announcement in Australian paleontology this year was Australia's largest dinosaur, hitting the international headlines in June 2021. So this will be no surprise for some of you. The bones of this titanosaur were actually discovered way back in 2005, west of Eramanga in central Queensland. After years and years of preparation, the holotype, nicknamed Cooper, was finally unveiled to the world this year. The new paper published by Scott Hucknall and others on June the 7th described the new species of titanosaur as Australotitan cooperensis. The holotype fossils included a left shoulder blade, left and right upper arm bones, a right lower arm bone, the right and left pubis and ischia, and the right and left upper leg bones. The Australotitan genus also had three other specimens referred to it. It shared a number of distinct features with other Australian titanosaurs such as Diamantinosaurus, Winton Titan and Savannosaurus. Hucknall and others suggested that if the Australian titanosaurs all shared a common ancestor, they should be considered under a new clade, Diamantinosauria. Only time would tell with further research. What is certain is that Australotitan was certainly living along other large titanosaurs 98 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. 
at 30 meters long and six and a half meters high at the hip, Australotitan cooperensis was the biggest titanosaur in its ecosystem. Today, Australotitan cooperensis is currently ranked in the top 10 biggest dinosaurs in the world. So no wonder it was famous worldwide in June 2021. 2021 was truly the year of the largest Australian prehistoric animals. But the announcement in August of a new, larger species of Australian pterosaur was truly special. This new species is called Tabungaga shorei and represents the fourth described species of pterosaur so far discovered in Australia. The holotype is a lower jawbone, possessing the largest crest of any Anhangurian pterosaur in the world. It was discovered near Richmond in central Queensland and dates to around 100 million years ago. Based on the fragmentary remains, Tabangaga has been given a very rough estimated wingspan of six to seven meters long. Based on that estimate, Tabangaga is no doubt the largest Australian pterosaur so far discovered. Eagles are uncommon fossils in Australia. They are also usually quite fragmentary. The great news is that this year in September 2021, a new species of eagle was described, Archihyrix sylvestris. This eagle was not only the most complete fossil eagle ever discovered in Australia, but also the oldest known species, dating all the way back to the Oligocene epoch between 26 and 24 million years ago. The partial skeleton consists of 63 bones discovered at Lake Pimpa in South Australia. Although it is the largest eagle known from Australian Oligocene deposits, in reality, it was only a small eagle, especially when compared to larger, modern relatives, such as the wedge-tailed eagle. This makes sense, however, because back in the Oligocene, Australia was heavily forested. So the short wings of Archihyrix were adapted for agile flight in enclosed forests. It would have ambushed prey such as birds, possums, and even koalas. Archihyrix sylvestris somehow managed to be the oldest, most complete, and largest specimen of eagle known from Oligocene Australia. And for an eagle, that's quite a feat. Unfortunately so far, the only evidence of Australian dinosaurs from the Triassic period are their tracks. But these tracks are still extremely important clues about the types of dinosaurs that roamed on Australian soil. In October of 2021, Anthony Romilio and others reinterpreted some Triassic dinosaur tracks. These tracks currently only exist as a cast, but did originate from the Ipswich Coal Measures of Southeast Queensland. This track was originally interpreted as belonging to a very large theropod dinosaur, with an estimated hip height of two meters. This was surprising to paleontologists, as no other theropods around the world reached that size 230 million years ago. However, Romilio worked out that the rocks the tracks were found in were younger at around 220 million years old. Furthermore, claw drag marks may have led to an overestimation of the hip height. Romilio then re-estimated the hip height for the dinosaur at only 1.36 meters. The footprint and trackway details indicate similarities with the Ichnogenus evozoum, which belongs to early sauropodomorphs. Although new fossil material and further studies are needed to confirm this idea for good, the idea that early sauropodomorphs could have been living in Triassic Australia is just so exciting. We end the year of 2021 on a bit of a sad note. The reclassification of Kronosaurus was probably the most controversial event for Australian paleontology this year. So without further ado, let's dive in and find out what happened to Kronosaurus. A bit of background first, Kronosaurus was a genus of large pliosaur that lived during the early Cretaceous period. For many years, the genus had two species, Cronosaurus queenslandicus from the Aptian and Albion deposits of Australia, and Cronosaurus boyacensis from the Aptian deposits of Colombia in South America. This year, however, that all changed. On the 20th of December, 2021, a new paper was published. Its goal was to fix taxonomic issues with the genus of Cronosaurus, and in a sense, declutter it. Firstly, Cronosaurus boyacensis was reclassified as its own unique genus and species called Moncurosaurus boyacensis. 
Now this part makes perfect sense as its holotype is a near complete skull and skeleton, possessing more than enough distinct features and also found in Colombia, a completely different part of the world. So that's great, understandable, that's good. No, rather the controversy comes from the reclassification of Kronosaurus queenslandicus in Australia. The researchers decided to keep the name, but only for the original specimen, the Albion holotype. The holotype was no more than a fragmentary piece of snout and teeth discovered a century ago. As a result, the authors were unable to find any features that could make the holotype comparable to other pliosaurs. In contrast, Harvard University in the United States possesses the famous near complete skeleton and skull of Kronosaurus queenslandicus. It had plenty of distinct features, so the authors decided to redesignate it as the holotype of a new pliosaur species called Iactus longmani. The authors stated that all other specimens previously referred to Kronosaurus are now referred to this holotype of Iactus longmani. The authors also state that the new genus of Iactus is justified because the holotype has enough distinct traits. However, some people have argued that the Harvard specimen could simply be the new holotype, known as a neotype for Kronosaurus queenslandicus. And the previous fragmentary snout of a holotype could have just been made an indeterminate pliosaur. The authors even mention that they will stand by their new classifications until future papers assign a neotype for Kronosaurus queenslandicus. In summary, the fossils previously referred to the Kronosaurus genus have now been divided into three separate genus, Moncurosaurus, Iectus, and Kronosaurus. Now we have two large pliosaurs from Cretaceous Australia, but the only evidence we have of Kronosaurus queenslandicus is now a small piece of snout and teeth. No paleontologists have yet had time to officially respond to the reclassification of Kronosaurus queenslandicus, so I look forward to the scientific papers and the upcoming scientific debate of 2022. I think in the new year, it's a terrific time to look back on the year that we've had and reflect on our personal achievements. It's also nice to reflect on the achievements of society and science that have occurred in 2021. And Australian paleontology has done so well this year, amazingly. In this past year, we've learned about Palakestes locomotion, semi-arboreal kangaroos, the largest Australian dinosaur, and the largest Australian pterosaur. We've also learned about the oldest Australian eagle and sauropodomorph, and we've been humbled to reconsider what we know about Kronosaurus queenslandicus. But before we finish up for 2021, can I just say thank you. Thank you for all your support as our viewers of Prehistoric Australia here on YouTube. As fans of the channel, you have constantly supported us. And I honestly, when we started this back in January, I wasn't expecting much. I thought maybe we'd only get about 50 subscribers and most of those would be our friends and family uh, just watching the channel. So the fact that there's so many of you who are just as passionate as I am about Australian paleontology it means a lot and I always love reading your comments. I love your feedback and your energy and appreciation and your support. So I hope you keep supporting us in 2022 and I can't wait to uh, release more videos for you guys to see. So in the new year, please stay safe, stay humble and we'll see you very, very soon. Thank you and goodbye.